guys, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I have my April book haul. So first of all, I feel like I was very good in April, although I did exploit a little loophole and we will get there when we come to it. But I only have five books here to show you today. So I'm very excited to do that. I did have one of my April books come in last month, so I did show that in my March book haul. But otherwise, yeah, we only have five books here. Let's do this. The first one I have here is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. This, this one actually did come in the Illumicrate for March. I do have a full video thank you, <laughs> up for that on my channel. I will leave it linked down below. Um, besides that video, I really don't know too much about this. It is going to be an adult fantasy. I believe it's going to have a sapphic romance in there. It's some sort of political military fantasy. I don't for sure know, but this cover and the end pages are gorgeous. I'm so, so happy I have this one. Here is under the dust jacket. And yeah, like I said, I have the whole unboxing up for this for Lumicrate for March. Um, but yes, very, very happy to have this. Speaking of book boxes, I don't have March's Crate here because I actually did get it in time to do it in my March haul, but I don't have either of April's book boxes in yet. I do believe Crates is supposed to be here soon, but I don't even have my tracking number for that. So we'll see. However, <laughs> I do have an Owl Crate book here, and that is going to be Bone Crier's Dawn by Catherine Purdy. This is the Owl Crate edition of the sequel to Bone Crier's Moon, which we received last year in an Owl Crate. I have not read it yet. <laughs> However, I did want my books to match because they are so, so gorgeous. Like, I absolutely love the way that they've done these Owl Crate ones. They just sort of taken the original art for these books and brought them more to the forefront like they've zoomed in a little bit and this one has silver edges it is literally just so so gorgeous so even though I have not read the first one yet I did have to pick this up before they were out of it because I did not want to have mismatched books yeah <laughs> I did do that it is just a purple under the dust jacket and it is going to be signed uh, I can't get over some of these Owl Crate editions, especially when they do stuff like this where it's very, very similar to the original cover design, but just like enhanced to me personally. Also, I love, love this purple cover. Ah, uh, this is gorgeous. And then the rest of the stuff that I have here is going to be manga. The one that I am counting as my book for April is going to be Love Sickness by Junji Ito. This is his new collection of short stories. This is a horror manga, so all of these stories are going to be horror-based. I have not read it yet, and I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to read it. Presley wants to touch this camera so bad. I don't even know exactly when I'm going to read it, but it is like very high up in my priority list. I'm doing a 30 and 30 manga challenge right now. And so I have a lot of manga that I'm trying to get through in this last like week of, <laughs> of April. Um, but yes, I had to get this one. I'm missing a couple things that have been translated into English by Junji Ito, but otherwise I own everything by him. I could not pass it up. I am so, so excited. Um, this is going to have multiple short stories, but the ones that it mentions on the back here is going to be Lovesickness. So the title of this collection, there is a short story called Lovesickness. And then it also includes the strange Hikizuri siblings and the Rib Woman. But it's 10 stories total. So there are seven other stories that I don't know the titles of. But the Rib Woman sounds terrifying. And I'm so, so excited. And then, like I said, I did do a little bit of a loophole this month. If you have been watching my videos for any time lately, like this year basically, you know that I'm on a semi-book buying ban. Last year I bought so many books and that's not necessarily a bad thing because I actually did read a lot of the books that were published in 2020, like when they came out, like I was really on top of my book buying and reading. However, I have over 500 physical books on my TBR. I did a whole video about it a couple months ago. I'll leave it linked down below in case you did not see it, but I have so many that my main goal of 2021 is to reduce the amount of physical books on my TBR. So 
my semi book buying ban is that I'm allowed to have two book boxes a month Owl Crate and Illumicrate, and then I'm only allowed to buy three other books. So for the month of April, I have Bone Crier's Dawn, I have Love Sickness, and then I have A Trial of Sorcerers by Elise Kova that I actually talked about in the March video because I did not realize it was coming in that early. It was not supposed to be here until beginning of April. And so since it came in early, I hauled it early, but it is an April book. So those are the books that I'm allowed to have. And then we have the two book boxes that have not come in yet. However, like I mentioned before, I'm doing the 30 volume in 30 days manga challenge and one of the mangas that I was reading this month was Waiting for Spring by Anna Shin. I will talk about like my thoughts on everything when I get to my wrap up video, but just know I absolutely loved it. I owned the first 12 volumes out of a 14 volume series, like volume 14 just came out earlier this year, I think like one to two months ago. And so it is a completed series and I was missing the last two volumes. So a loophole that I have been talking to my husband about, not necessarily to use it much this year, but maybe next year if I decide I'm still on a book buying ban, is that if I buy something and am able to read it in the same month that I buy it, it never actually goes on my TBR. And so I posed this question to my Instagram stories and only one person said I should stick to the plan and not buy any books. Stevie, thank you for trying to keep me accountable, but nobody else decided I should be accountable, including my husband. So I did end up buying volume 13 and 14 of Waiting for Spring by Anna Shin. I've already read these because as soon as I bought them, I needed to finish the series again. So good, I'll talk about what's more in this series in my wrap up, but basically it follows our main character of Mitsuki, who is starting high school, doesn't have too many friends, and she ends up befriending the guys on the basketball team. I absolutely loved it. These are, like I said, volume 13 and volume 14. Um, and this is basically our main cast minus one other female character who is another friend of Mitsuki but is not on the basketball team, so she doesn't really get covers. Um, but I absolutely loved this series. I loved the characters. It pulled on my heartstrings. And I had, had, had to get these. So since I have read them already, they don't technically get added to my TBR at the end of the month. So I did it. I should not have because my book buying ban, but I did. I read them all. It's not going on my TBR. I don't feel bad about it. However, I'm going to try not to exploit this loophole much, which is why Love Sickness is one of my April books and not another loophole. Because even if I do decide that I'm going to be able to read it by the end of April, I didn't want to use this loophole too much. And so these five books are my book haul for April currently. I do have a couple book boxes still on its way, but because of the fact that they're not here yet, I might do uh, an unboxing video on my channel anyway. But otherwise, yeah, I'm really happy that this was a short video, short book haul. Um, I'm trying not to buy as many things, so as long as you don't see me doing that, then we're good. This is all of it, and yeah, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more videos. I do have videos up Mondays, Thursdays, and sometimes Saturdays, so I will see you then. Bye!